Let's use a Maclaurin series to talk a little bit about Newton's method. I'm sure you guys remember from Calculus 1 that the idea of Newton's method is you have some function, which I probably drew a little bit poorly here, but this is fine. So some function y equals f of x, and this function has a root r, and so the, the function has a zero, you should say. And so we want to try to find, our goal here is to find the value of this r such that the function f of r is equal to zero. So we want to try to estimate, or actually find if possible, the value of this number r um, for which f of r is equal to zero. So it's a root of this equation, f of x equals zero. It's a zero of the function. It's an x-intercept of the graph. It has all these different names in math, but this is the goal. And so the process that we use is we choose a nearby point, call it x sub naught. This is what we call an initial guess. So we have some reason to believe that our guess is close to the zero, but it's not equal to the zero. And what we do then is we go up to the graph, we draw the tangent line to the graph, and we know that as long as we're close to this point, the tangent line to the graph is a good approximation of the function near this point, right? And so we then go along the tangent line. By the way, the equation of the tangent line, t of x is equal to, so add x naught, right? It's equal to the function value, f of x naught, plus the slope, which is f prime at x naught, times x minus x naught. So that's the equation of the tangent line. By the way, tangent line in, in our new context of power series is the first order Taylor approximation of the function, right, at this point. So what do we do then? Well, we set that equal to zero and we find the zero of the tangent line, the tangent function, right? And then we just repeat this process. So once we know that, we go down to the curve, which in this case I've drawn it so it's below, right? And then we find the new tangent line and look what happens. We get closer, right? We get closer. And if you repeat this process over and over and over and over and over again, eventually you will get exactly, well, you won't, you, if you do it infinitely many times, you'll eventually approach the point under certain, certain circumstances. There are, I'm not going to go back over all of Newton's method, but there are certain properties that we need uh, for the derivative um, to make sure that this process is actually going to work for us. But this is the idea, okay? And so the iteration method is that we take each tangent line here, and we set it equal to zero, and we solve for the x value, where this hits right here, right? So this is our guess x1, and then this one down here is our guess x2, and then eventually these should approach to the value of r that we're looking for. And so Newton's method's formula is that for every value of k, we plug in our previous value and we subtract off f of x naught, not f prime, sorry, f of x naught, f of xk, the previous one, time uh, divided by f prime at xk. All right, and so this is, this is the approximation. Now, in this approximation, what is our goal? Our goal is as xk, as we repeat this process over and over and over again, right? So this is for k equal to 0, 1, etc. We plug in to get the new values. As we repeat this over and over and over again, our goal is for f of xk to approach 0, right? So f of xk should be approaching 0 as k approaches infinity. That's our goal, right? And so then what do we say? Well, then our xk must be approaching the root r that we're looking for, the root of this equation right here. All right? So this is this is the goal. If we take this equation and maybe we just go back to this one and we rearrange this, right? To solve for everything that we just said here, then what we end up with is that the f of xk is equal to the derivative f prime at xk plus xk, the same point, right, f, of f prime at xk, times the difference, so the difference is going to end up being xk uh, plus 1 minus xk. All right, or we can just, just in case I got the sign wrong here, you can always make this absolute values of everything, okay? Just take the absolute values, and this turns out to be the error, right? Because we want this to be zero, so this turns out to be the remainder of some kind of a, of a series approximation of R. And so what we can do then is we can bound this error, this remainder term, so this becomes the remainder. 
This is the remainder in the second order approximation of what we're trying to find for r here, right? So it's actually r1. It's the remainder of the first term, right? So the first derivative term. So we'll just call this r1 of x. And let's write down Taylor's remainder theorem. Let's just remember. So Taylor's remainder or inequality, Taylor's remainder theorem, I like to call it, says the following, that r1 of x, this term right here, should be always bounded by the second derivative on whatever interval we're looking at. So uh, the second derivative is bounded by some constant m over 2 factorial times x minus x naught, usually, right, to the second power. So this is the, the bound of the first remainder, the remainder of the first order Taylor approximation. And so in our notes in the problem, we set some conditions here, right? We said suppose, so under certain conditions, these are the conditions when uh, Newton's method is at its best in some sense, okay? So we're going to write these down. So suppose, first of all, that the derivative of f of x in some neighborhood, so the derivative itself is bounded by some lower bound k. So in other words, the derivative doesn't become too small. And why is that important? Well, if we go back to this equation, the derivative is downstairs, right? It's in the denominator of a fraction. If that gets small, it's going to cause major changes in, in our formula here, and we don't want those. We want f to be small and f prime to not be too small. All right, so if it's bounded by this some constant k, positive constant k, um, on an interval, which we'll talk about the interval in a minute, um, and Furthermore, let's suppose that the second derivative exists and is bounded above, so the curvature is bounded above by some constant m. All right, and so this is the reason for this is, is what we're going to find here in our remainder theorem. So we've got these two values, k and m, both positive, okay? Um, m could be zero, I guess, but uh, small though, all right? So, Actually, m doesn't even have to be small. It's, it's positive or zero. It's non-negative, okay? Um, but it can't be negative, of course, because it's a bound on an absolute value. And then let's suppose that all of this is happening on an interval that contains the actual root that we want. So r, r is called the root. So it contains the actual root r that we want. It contains our previous guess, x sub k and it contains our next guess, x sub k plus 1. Okay, so in other words, this should be an interval, and as, as we proceed along with Newton's methods process, these usually these points are getting closer to r anyway, so this is just some interval around r for which all of these approximations are falling in here, right? So in, uh, by the picture I've drawn here, maybe the interval looks like uh, from here to here, so maybe that's our interval i. And all of the happenings, everything that's going on is happening inside of this interval. All right, well, we can then plug into the remainder theorem. So, so what we wanna do is bound this remainder using the remainder theorem here, find a bound on this term, because again, we're, we're hoping for this to be very small, close to zero. So this is gonna tell us how well Newton's method works. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set x naught equal to uh, just x sub k, and set x equal to r, and plug them into this formula, and what we will find then is that our remainder term, all right, our remainder term here is bounded by, so remember, our remainder is this, right, so what we end up with is that the remainder term itself, r sub 1 of x, just r sub 1 is good enough, right, this is equal to the f prime at x, k, all right, times the difference x, k plus 1 minus r, and this is bounded by, so this is always going to be bigger than or equal to k times x sub k plus 1 minus r. On the other side of the equation, what do we have? We have m over 2 times this, so this just becomes uh, x, k minus r quantity squared, all right, so on the other side of our equation, m over 2 factorial x minus x naught quantity squared, this just becomes m, the m is the same meaning as, as the remainder theorem is supposed to have, m over 2 times xk minus r quantity squared, all right, and so what we get then is that the remainder itself, which is k, xk plus, it's, it's bigger than, xk plus 1 minus r, is in turn 
less than, right, it's less than m over 2 times xk minus r quantity squared. And these are measuring, so this one right here is the error in the kth approximation. And this one is the error in the next approximation, epsilon k plus 1, so the error in the k plus 1 step. And what we can do is, because we assume that this k is positive, we can divide through by k, and we end up with an error bound, so from one step to the next. So the error in the k plus first approximation of Newton's method is less than or equal to m over 2 times k times the error in the previous step squared. All right, where, by the way, this term is a constant, right? This is constant. And so if we just ignore this constant, then what does this mean? Well, it means that suppose the error in the kth step was about 0 0.01. So we were within two decimal places pretty much, right? So what this tells us then is that the error in the k plus first step, you know, depending on this constant, but the error in the next step is going to be about the error, this error squared. So what's that going to be? It's about 0 0.0001, right? So at this point, you can see that it doesn't take a whole lot of steps to get within a, a few decimal places as long as you make a good approximate, a first approximation then you apply Newton's method to your whatever you know your approximation was you will get to the root you know pretty quickly depending on uh, the actual nature of your function but under the circumstances here that we've set the hypotheses that we've set the error um, essentially is squared which is a good thing right when the numbers are small so so the magnitude of the error is squared from one step to the next